this is a tool which um, is drawn really from the sort of um, research that you would do when you go into a company and you're trying to audit their communication and understand um, how effective it is, whether that's internal or external communication. Um, it's been slightly tailored to meet the school context. So let me just explain what we're looking at. So from left to right, it's the five different reasons messaging fails, as um, Simon just alluded to, from not sent through to not prioritised. Then on the vertical scale, you've got the sort of no knowledge as to what's going on, which is where it's pure speculation. And at the top, you've got 100% certainty. We know exactly what it is that's going on. So the tool is designed to keep you to organize an inquiry or organize an investigation of some sort. It's designed to stop you from two things which can often happen. One is going around in circles. If communication is failing or you have a sense that communication is underperforming, um, it's really hard to get to the bottom of it in, a, in one leap um, because it can be for so many different reasons and there can be multiple causes as well as we'll look at in a second. So if you just keep um, tr guessing at what it is, you can easily, you'll, you'll find that you've kind of forgotten what your original hypothesis hypotheses were by the time you know six months have gone by and you still haven't improved the situation and by that point you're probably coming back around to the beginning again and you're just still trying to explore what it is that's going wrong i've got i'm confident a lot of schools will be in this exact situation they know communication with parents should be better they do they've sort of tried to do things and dabbled and it's never really gone anywhere the other thing that can happen is that you can just leap to conclusions and i think again this is a thing which is very true in business where you've got strong leadership um quite often strong leaders uh, and the teams of strong leaders can leap to conclusions because there's a lot of self-confidence there and um, experience can blind you to the un unknown. So, so what this tool is designed to do is to stop those things from happening and actually to just slow you down and focus you on what's the next question to ask. So we've made up a sort of an example here of how you would use it. Um, I'm happy to stay on the call after this and go into other examples or if anyone really thought this was useful and didn't doesn't quite get it from this, um, please email me and I'd be really happy to jump on a Zoom or a call with you or your team to sort of explain how this, this would work. Um, so here's an, here's an example. So imagine that the um, example is we've, we've sent an email out which is to um, get parents to fill in a consent form. So really important um, piece of communication. Um, and so 6% of people have completed it after a week or something like that. So immediately, you know, something's wrong. This is something which perhaps last year, you know, you've got 70% of people filling it in or whatever. So you know something's wrong. Um, the first thought might be, well, did it go out? Unfortunately, if it was 0%, you'd be confident, yep, that wasn't sent. The so 6% that have re responded to it means that it did go out. But it's just to be a, a very, very poor, um, ineffective communication. So nevertheless, though, it's worth asking the IT department to see if they've got any more that they can give you about what happened when it was sent out um, or whoever's running the email software that, um, that you use. So let's say apparently there may have been a tech issue on the day that, that happens. So the IT team can look into that. But at the same time, you really do realise that you have got to get some better responses back from this. So in the meantime, you do something which is quite common in uh, market research which are various forms of ad hoc informal um, market research. This is an example that was actually um, an idea that I heard uh, only recently from a, a former head teacher um, who I think may be actually listening uh, this evening, but um, uh, maybe not, maybe we'll watch afterwards. Uh, but she gave me a great idea, which was asking parent governors to perform that task. So parent governors are parents themselves, so they sort of blend in as it were. Um, you could task um, one or two parent governors, say look, over the next month at the school gate, at events, at sports matches, could you just dig in, dig in a little bit, anonymously of course, but just report back, did parents receive this? You know, did they hear about it? Do you know what's been going on? A really powerful and effective way you're not trying to get a sort of scientific survey and it certainly isn't as um, contentious as a survey you can't survey the parents all the time as you will know um, but this is a really good way of getting some anecdotal evidence and that could be easily what you need to point you into the direction of what's happening so let's say the IT team have come back and actually reported that there was a server issue on the day that the communication was sent out and it only meant to half the parents. So that's a great result. Now we've kind of moved ourselves right up the cert towards certainty. That, that seems really, really straightforward. It wasn't sent, at least to some of the parents. So a great response to that then is, well, send it. So we can resend that today. But of course, there's another issue here. This was a really important communication. And we'll touch on this at the end of this session and it would be something we'll focus on more in the next workshop. Not all communications are equal. 
this one is really important. This is a legal requirement, it's a regulatory requirement. And so it really should have been checked. The fact that nobody checks when the really important communications are going out that they have been sent is a, is a problem. So in this case, we'll say to the IT manager, look, can you take that on as a task to train anyone who's sending out important communications to check, show them how to do it on the system or whatever it is, however it works in that school. So that's fine. So there's two outcomes there. We've we've got we can resend it today, and we've got a little bit of a, a future sort of improvement um, idea there as well. But let's say the governors come back, and now they say, look, we found something out which was really unexpected. But it turns out on a WhatsApp group, some of the parents began to get a bit antsy about the form of words in this request form and they began to start worrying about whether or not it was gdpr compliant and you know how it goes before we knew where we were suddenly there was a sort of not quite pitch walks at the gate but the decision had been collectively made not to go with this form it didn't feel legitimate or right and no one had thought to communicate that back to the school of course so this discovery is a problem you know this is some the sort of thing that happens all the time and you'll never even know most of the times it happens but on this occasion it does matter so that at least prompts us to think well let's maybe write to the parents we need to send a letter to them say look we get gdpr this is really not uh, this is actually very compliant with GDPR and also these are all the benefits of filling in forms like this for you, your children, their safety, etc, etc. So that's a very simple intervention. But let's say as part of this whole process the IT team also have discovered something else which is profound. Let's say they also found during the generating the reports they were generating that 20% of parents or more haven't responded to any emails in the past year well now you've discovered and you weren't even looking for it, a really serious problem if that many parents aren't responding to anything it might be indicative of the fact that they have really fallen into that not prioritized camp that most pernicious end of the spectrum as simon described it and then you can design interventions for that so you know maybe it's a video message from their head to send out to some parents to ask them to forward it on to other parents and get something viral going through the community or maybe it's a total reset um you know call the parents in have a big town hall and say look we get it communication isn't working it's two-way well here's the commitment we're going to make to you this is how we're going to change these are the changes we'd like to see from you let's talk you you're you're, you're the head teachers or some of you are you'll know how this works better than we do in your in your context but the point here about this is the way that by using the tool you're able to pick a path it always just prompts you to ask the next best question of the next of the right people to take you one step further and if you stick to this and as you see there are multiple possible um, examples here um, you will find that you do get to the bottom of what's going wrong and you find improvement is um, uh, is forthcoming <laughs>